Hey guys, uh, my name is Jeff Glover with Glover U, and I'm here with Kathy Schweitzer, and we're going to dive in. Fortunately, we set aside 90 minutes for this webinar, and we got about 75 minutes of material. So the good news is we're not going to have to rush through anything, and you're going to get everything that we had planned on presenting anyways, because uh, we had budgeted for 90 minutes of time and we got about 75 minutes to get through so good news is we're 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 right on schedule i guess if you're going to uh, monitor it that way um for those that are not familiar my name is jeff glover i'm from detroit michigan i've been listing and selling real estate now this may i entered into my 21st year uh also uh own a team here in michigan we've been the number one home selling team in the state of michigan 10 out of the last 11 years that's of all brands uh, we do about a thousand transactions a year, 900 to a thousand transactions a year with about 35 salespeople. So our per person productivity is strong. Also own a handful of brokerages, uh, one of which just uh, became the number one brokerage in Metro Detroit for most homes closed. And uh, we experienced our second most profitable year last year uh, in the history of the company. So while other brokerages were down, uh, we're doing okay. And that's hopefully why you're here because you're going to learn how to build your team or build your brokerage the right way. And I'm joined by Kathy Schweitzer, who for many of you don't you, needs no introduction, but I will tell you, um, for those that are not familiar, uh, Kathy and I go way back, way, way back. Uh, I mean, as far back as to where she was the very first person to hire me to manage one of her offices. She ran a 16 office company uh, here in Detroit and uh, a very productive one. It was one of the most productive in the Midwest. And I had the honor of being a manager for Kathy as she was in charge of the sales managers and leadership of the company. And so I'll let Kathy get into her introduction in just a second. But before I do, for those that are not familiar, because we probably have a handful of first timers on, for those that are not familiar, Glover U is a broker agnostic training and coaching organization for real estate agents and leaders all across North America. Today, we've got clients in virtually every single state in the country and a handful of provinces in Canada. And we're leading not just real estate agents, but we're leading leaders like yourself on, on particularly right now, how to win in this new space that we're uh, navigating. When I say the new space, I'm talking about the industry, not just the market. Uh, how can a team be profitable in a market like this? How can a brokerage be profitable in a market like this? Good news is we're going to walk you through our plan today. So when we're done, you'll know exactly what you need to know and do. Speaking of plan, every single one of you who registered for this, you received an email with a link to download the actual plan. I'm going to recommend that you print that off. Go ahead and pull that up and print that off now. I'll have them throw that in the chat. So if I can have someone from Glover U throw that in the chat right now for us, I'd appreciate that. You can download that right now. You can click print. You're gonna to wanna to click print because even if you're not writing in it right this moment, you're taking notes on your laptop or whatever, um, you're gonna to wanna to have that handy for later because this is the exact same business plan that we're operating from. All right, our goal is to finish the year as one of our most, our, our, I'm sorry, our most profitable year in our brokerage in the history of the company. And we're not talking a brokerage that makes 50, 80,000 a year. We're talking half a million dollars a year in profit. Uh, we're also planning on having one of our most profitable years for a real estate team following this exact plan. And so I encourage you to get your hands on the plan, download it. There's going to be a lot of blank lines and Kathy and I are going to walk you through how to fill those in. And we're going to talk about different strategies that you can deploy to recruit, train, retain, and essentially run a business the correct way this year. So before we jump in, make sure you've got your hands on that plan. Click on that link, download it, print it. It's about 40 pages, but trust me, you're going to keep it all year. So you're only going to need to print it once and you're going to operate from it all year. Now, before we jump into the plan, Kathy, I, I did a little bit of intro. So sorry for stealing some of the thunder, but I think it'd be important oh. for everyone to know uh, who you are as well. In addition to being my one of my, my first leader while I was a leader, uh, you've led a lot of other people in addition to myself. So I'll let you share a little bit about yourself. No, I appreciate that. I don't want to take too much time, but yeah. So I am, you know, I call myself a leader of leaders. I'm very fortunate to uh, have been in this business for, I guess, about 35 years now. Um, I started when I was 10. Okay, good. Thank you for the humor. So actually, I have been in the business um, for 35 years. I do spend a lot of my time leading leaders. Um, not to get into too much of the history, but I actually did hire Jeff. 
and I oversaw uh, 18 of our great leaders, managers with my husband's company, Schweitzer Real Estate. And then I, uh, when we sold that, I ended up in the Boston area leading an amazing independent company as well. And the thing that was fun there is I was actually in the field, Jeff, as you know, recruiting yeah. every day yeah. for 10 years. And we had a huge <laughs> success with recruiting a lot of um, agents into that. <clears throat> and now uh, I have the honor of being CEO of Glover University and also overseeing the leaders of our market centers, right? Yeah. And working with them day to day and also overseeing some of our great leaders at Glover Agency and you know, our job, my job is to see that each and every person that I lead and I work with have a positive, productive and sound, profitable business. And so today we're going to be talking about how to do that and uh, what you need to do uh, in order to get to the next level with that uh, great uh, culture and also, you know, the plan it takes to get to that next level. And I'm excited yeah. to be here. Yep. Awesome. Well, I think that everyone can learn a lot from your experience, just as I have uh, through the years. And of course, uh, we're still learning together as uh, it's really cool how life is full circle, how we get to get, how we get to work together in leadership uh, in our brokerages and with our teams today. So first things first, also, I want to point out uh, a lot of you are chatting us in the chat, which uh, we, we appreciate that. And we also want to see the other attendees seeing who you are and where you're chiming in from. So before you type anything, click on the chat and you're gonna change host and panelists because there will be some participation that we're asking for today. Right now it defaults to hosts and panelists, change that to everyone. So that way when you're commenting, everyone can see your comments. So it defaults to hosts and panelists, change that to everyone and go ahead and type a message. And the message I want you to type in there is where you're joining us from today. I wanna see what part of the country, either US, Canada, where are you joining us from today? Again, change that to everyone. There we go. All right, Colorado's in the house. Pennsylvania, Minnesota. All right, Atlanta, a lot of Atlanta. Texas, a lot of Texas too. I'm seeing some Arizona. Of course, great state of Michigan. Alabama, thanks for joining us today in Alabama. Again, apologize for the late start. We had something weird happen with Zoom that we've never had before. But the good news is we're not gonna have to rush through everything. We've budgeted enough time to get through everything and we're excited to jump in. So. Now that you guys have shown us where you're joining us from, so thank you for that. Make sure you have the workbook downloaded. And what I want everyone to do right now is I want you to turn to page four in the workbook. All right. So download the workbook, print it. If you haven't print, no, come on, cowboy country, get out of here, Jason. Um, we'll get you, we'll get you back next year. I think we all know who really won that game. Don't get me started on the Lions. <laughs> See, this is what happens. You can't get started with Lions talk with me. I'll be going on forever. Um, anyways, turn to page four in your workbook, because I want to point out one thing that I find, um, brokers are using the most in their businesses. All right. And Kelly's bringing that up behind the screen there. And that's the top right-hand corner. That's the morning message. So every day, Monday through Friday, I'm writing a message specifically designed to help real estate agents list and sell more homes. Now, if I'm in your shoes, I would do what a lot of our great coaching clients do. And Kathy, I know that you use this with a lot of your clients as well. Take that message or those messages and string them together and turn it into sales meeting content. All right. I know of a handful of great leaders around the country. Uh, Thomas Elrod's team in particular, they tell me, Jeff, we look forward to the message as part of our, our daily huddle every single morning. That daily message is designed to help real estate agents list and sell more real estate. Take advantage of that. Print those off, document them, share them in your sales meetings. A lot of times I'll do series. Like in the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about ways to get two sales for every listing you take. I've been helping agents with their social media on the buy side and their social media on the sell side. In fact, I'm really excited to roll something out in the next few weeks that we just rolled out to our team here at the Glover Agency. Anyways, when I roll things out and I share them, I share them through the daily message. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I want you to open up your cell phones right now. If, you, if you're not currently on the daily message, you're missing out, it's free. All right, open up your cell phones and go to your app store. Okay, I'm gonna do it along with you. So, you know, for me, don't poke, but I have an Android. So I have to go to my Play Store. Wherever you go for your apps, you're gonna search Glover space, the letter U. Okay, there it is. It should come up right at the top. You're going to click install. Now you might have Glover U and Glover U events. Don't download the events app. You don't need that. That's for our bigger events. The daily message and all of these resources listed on your screen come through the app. You can access them all through the app. Now the daily message is an email, 
but it also can be a notification if you have your notifications on. Uh, we, we used to do the daily message through a text and everyone on the West Coast said we were texting them way too early in the morning. So we decided to switch to email and through the app. So make sure you have that because honestly, all of our free resources go there first. Use those in your sales meetings, in your trainings, do whatever you want with that. I write that every single morning based on what's happening in the industry right now. And for those that are not familiar, in addition to leading a real estate team and, and owning brokerages, I'm in the trenches with your people. I mean, that's probably the biggest difference. People are like, wow, it seems like Glover U just exploded out of nowhere. Well, first of all, I've been working at this for 21 years. Glover U has been in existence since 2016, 2017, and exploded out of nowhere is, is well, okay, fine. That's just 21 years in the trenches to explode out of nowhere, I guess is how you can put that. But I'm still in the field with your people. Just as Kathy is in the field with our leaders, doing, uh, you know, helping them with recruiting and training and developing and coaching, we're in the trenches. And I think that's probably the biggest difference of why uh, people are experiencing, uh, you know, seeing us experience the growth that we're experiencing. Okay, Kathy, let's go ahead and jump in. We got the resources out of the way. You got the Glover U app downloaded. Ke uh, Kelly, do me a favor, drop the workbook in the chat one more time uh, for anyone that joined us late or if you had to get off and get back on because you were wondering what was going on with Zoom. I'm going to blame AT&T, all right? Somehow, Zoom is probably owned by AT&T. We're going to blame AT&T for this, for this mess up, all right? So let's get that workbook downloaded and let's jump in. All right, Kathy. So I'm going to go to page six, uh, goals at a glance. Let's talk about this for a second. And then if we can get that thrown back up on the screen there, Kelly, thank you. Let's talk about goals at a glance. So Kathy, this is essentially like the inside cover of, of the business plan. Why, why did we put it on the inside cover? Why is it important that it kind of stands alone? Well, okay, so you and I came up when we created this document that <clears throat> you've got to kind of hone in on exactly what you need to focus on for your business plan, right? So it's like a one pager about yeah. what we need to focus on. And it's pretty self-evident mm -hmm. um, of the things that are super important. Yep. And uh, again, it's when you look at it, you know, we're big about every single day glancing at this. Yeah. So um I love that. And I heard one of our great keynote speakers say every single night before I go to bed, I look at my goals at a glance every single mm -hmm. night. Yep. So that's why we do it. Yeah. So that, listen, it's, it's kind of like one of those things, you know, um, what, what gets, what gets measured gets managed. And, and if you're paying attention to that regularly, then you're constantly going to be thinking about, okay, how can I close more units? How can I increase our volume? How can I have more GCI? How can we have more revenue, right? If you're, if you're paying attention to that, then that means when you enter the office every day, that's going to be top of mind in terms of what you're going after. So let's go ahead and jump into part one and part two of the leadership business plan. And again, we're not filling out business plans today. This isn't meant to be some boring business planning session. In fact, I think you'll appreciate because when we get into this, we're actually going to share with you specific tactics, everything, you know, we're going to get in as much as we can in, in 75 minutes or so of everything we're doing for recruiting, retention, training, coaching, developing and growth. So, uh, um, you know, hopefully you're, you've got your business plan printed out and you're, you're taking notes uh, for that reason. So, Part one and part two, Kathy, tell us what's going on here. Yeah, so obviously the first thing you need to do with a business plan, and again, I've, I've learned that there are some people that are really good at business planning and some that are not, right? Mm -hmm. But the first two parts are obviously looking at a recap, right, of what you've done in the past. And again, this is to me very common sense. Um, it's something though I've learned, Jeff, that I find interesting is that some of the best team leaders right, that we have that are overseeing great teams have really now started to take a deeper dive into like looking at the year before. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, you and I both come from a brokerage background. So we're used to totally diving in and mm -hmm. seeing where we were, what did we do? And then obviously part two is our recruiting results. Yeah. And you know, what we did, and you can see everybody in the audience, I know, I know, it's very detailed. Yeah, But, is. you know, you have to be detailed and you have to be willing and open to look at what you've done so then you can know where you need to be and yeah. project for the next year. Well, and what this shows me also is, you know, what's worth doubling down on. You know, just like we teach right. the real estate agents, once you find uh, something that's working for you, 
you've got to double down on it. Well, without yep. doing these couple first sections of the plan, we don't really know what's working for you, right? This really yeah. kind of tells us what's working, what's not. It also, you know, puts the spotlight on, you know, if I look at, okay, recruiting interviews producing, let's just say you had 50 of those and then total agents added producing one, all right? That means 49 yeah. out of 50 agents you met with didn't join you, why, right? So this shows us, it's going to put a spotlight on areas of, of opportunity. And that's, you know, again, as Kathy said, it's detailed, it's tedious, but you're running a business, you know, you really should be setting the example for the real estate agents anyways. Well, also it helps, you know, the idea is to be, be able to predict what you can do in the future yeah. based on what you've done in the past. And so you want to yep. create that duplication yep. and really look into what your ratios are in your wins. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a, it's a huge component of, in the first, in the beginning of doing it, it can, like you said, feel tedious, but guys, when you do that, then the more you do it, the more you can predict what the next year is going to look like. And then it yeah. becomes more effective and actually you become more efficient when you do it. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into the sources of sales and recruiting. So we're going to be on page 10 in the workbook there. Yeah. And by well, the way, you know, notice uh, again, this is why I want you guys to print this. Our marketing team put a blank page next to every single page in this workbook. So, uh, you know, if you're going to three ring bind this or whatever, you're going to have a blank page of notes next to each one. That way you can keep the actual plan itself clean. But let's take a look at part three. Uh, because, Kathy, this is a leadership webinar, we're not going to spend a lot of time on sources of sales production. I mean, obviously, we do quarterly business plans. We do half yearly business plans. We do annual business plans with your agents you know, brokerages and teams across the country trust us with that portion of it. You guys have heard enough from us on that. So let's jump right through, right down to top three sources of recruits and ways you can double down on the above recruiting sources. And why don't we start, Kathy, with the top three sources that you're seeing with the broker owners that you coach and also in our own team and, and our own brokerages, where are you seeing the most uh, recruits come from right now? Yeah, so that's an awesome. So we're looking, guys, at the top three sources for recruits. And don't shoot me, but I just have to point something out on the top. Please, three yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mean to yeah. get ahead. Go ahead. So number one, right? The top three sources of sales productions. What I find sometimes is that we're not introspecting the leaders that I lead, whether it's a team leader, whether it's one of our leaders at the market center. Um, we have to get a deep dive in and see where we're getting most of our business, Right. <clears throat> and we all know that it's going to be past client center of influence for referrals, number one. And then you have to look at the, the, your sources and then make sure you do right below that ways your agents can double down on the above, the above sources. So yeah, just yeah. like at Glover Agency, you guys have done, you know, with Taylor at the lead and working with Taylor myself and, and you, you know, you've done a great job on doubling down with getting your agents to really jump into the systems of working their past clients and center of influence. So yeah, that's an important piece because you can work with the team and then it, it sets up the plan, the game plan for how you consistently get the team to work their past clients and center of influence, for example. And well, again, Glover agency, you guys put together those quarterly plans that are just yeah working tremendously. So just to tip well, on that. And I was going to say, and now you have sales meeting material. Like I just came from a sales meeting of ours up the yeah. road in, in a town uh, in Troy, Michigan, which you know where that's at. And um, we, we covered the database plan for the next month. And so every month now it's, it's sales meeting material. It's part of our culture. It's part of our standard, which, you know, for years and years, it wasn't, but let's go ahead and jump down to Let's get into the recruiting side of yep. it. Uh, yep. uh, you know, people want to know where we're seeing the best success as it relates to finding people to join our team or brokerage. Yeah, no doubt. So the team leaders that I am coaching and also the brokers I'm coaching, without a doubt, the top three, number one, you all are going to go, oh, really? Do I really <laughs> have to still use this old fashioned thing and pick up the phone? But the number one, Top three sources for recruiting. Now, all three of these, we, you and I both know are working very effectively. But yeah. we wrote down number one is phone prospecting. Without a doubt, Yeah, it still is the best way to recruit. Now, I'm not telling you not to do all the others. And by the way, yep. you and I have, you know, what do we teach the top 25? But today we're spending time on a deep dive with the top three. Yeah. So basically, it's phone prospecting. Guys, 
when I was doing it in the field and with the leaders I'm coaching and working now, and actually, Jeff, I'm excited to do the prospecting clinic with Taylor and I are actually going to be recruiting on the yeah. phone recruiting with all our team leaders. Yeah. And to me, um, it's huge because I loved being in the trenches and I still love being in the trenches, actually calling recruits. Yeah. But basically it is when you pick up the phone, right, Jeff, you're, you, when you recruited for us, you were awesome and you picked yeah. up the phone. It was only the phone. The only right. method I had was the phone. Exactly. And you know what, what's funny, it was the only method I had. And I just, you know, that was in Boston. That was only two years ago. Yeah. And we crushed it there. Yeah. Why do you think the phone? Well, we don't think. So Jeff, tell the audience why the phone works so well. Two reasons. Number one, because most aren't willing to do it. So they're only getting a call from a handful of people. And when they get calls, they're getting calls from, from VAs in other yeah. countries. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not a yeah. genuine conversation when they're having a conversation with someone in Indonesia. All right. That's number one. And number two, because it's, it's sales. When, when you call someone, you have an opportunity to ask questions and build a relationship with them, which is not something you can do over text message. It's not something you can accomplish in an email. It's not something that you can accomplish in social media. Now we're gonna talk about how we use text, email, and social media, because we use all of those as well. But the number one resource is still the good old fashioned phone and just calling through a roster or calling a target list. Right, so what's cool about that everybody is, Again, Jeff makes uh, makes a great point. So I'm a huge believer. And again, when I was the vice president recently at a different place, I personally called everyone. I didn't use a VA. I didn't use anybody but myself. It's more genuine, yeah. especially when you're you're reaching out to productive agents. Yeah. So a lot of our team leaders, Mary Beth, Melissa, Sean, they're reaching out to um, experienced people. Why? Mm -hmm. Because A, they bring money to the bottom line quicker. That's not the only reason. But yep. it's also the, the verbal conversation becomes genuine. Yep. And so all the team leaders that I coach, whether it's at our market centers, whether it's the brokers I coach with Glover U, we really work on asking the person we're talking to great questions. We use scripts. Yep. But again, when you're talking to people, you're able to connect. And you and I both talk about connecting all the time. Our mm -hmm. job is to connect to the person that we're talking to. And when I was in the Boston area, we we became the number one independent company. And it was all picking up the phone, yeah. calling people, connecting, and then taking our value yeah. proposition and meeting their needs. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're more persuasive on the phone too. Yeah. Uh, you hit the nail on the head there and we're going to get into it. Cause of course, you know, yeah. Kathy, everyone wants to talk about the sexy stuff, you yeah, know, the social media and all that. Uh, but, but you, you made a, a real good point there. And I want, for those taking notes, I want you to write this down. You need to identify an agent in your company who is succeeding with a portion of your value proposition. It's very yes. important. If you want to, if you want to see your recruiting results improve, you have to identify a value proposition in your company. And that could be um, an agent that's taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, that could be an agent who's taking advantage of your operations support. Uh, it could be an agent who's taking advantage of your CRM and your lead generation through your CRM. You want to pair a value proposition with a success story. Because as a producing real estate agent, I don't care about what I care about how it's going to benefit me. It's no, it's it's actually sales 101. If you think about it for a second, a great car salesperson does not get a great great car salesperson does not get into the drive along with you and say, "Let me tell you all about this 12 point um, massaging system that does this, 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 and this." You know what they do? They say, "Kathy, go ahead and just sit back for a second, would you?" Okay, and they press a little button. Oh, I kind of like that. All right. I can get used to it. They jump right to the benefit. And so the mistake a lot of salespeople make, because as leaders, we're, we're salespeople. We're selling people totally. either on their vision, on their goals, on their dreams, or on how we can help them. Absolutely. We have to do a good job of identifying a value proposition of ours and pairing it up with a success story. Because I care about the success story. I don't care about the tool. I care about how it's going to benefit me. And if you can show me evidence of someone else that it's helping, 
Now I'm bought in. Now I'm in tune with what you have to say. And for those of you that have been watching our organizations through the years, and you know, I'm, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself because we get really excited about this. Yep. You know, Taylor Kerrigan's doing a phen phenomenal job with it with the Glover Agency. She totally. is specifically finding success stories of agents using our value proposition and going right to agents at their level of production with other companies and saying, hey, you remind me a lot of so-and-so and they're using this. And oh, by the way, when they started using this, they went from 22 units to 34 units in their first year of using it. So find a value prop benefit of yours and a success story that you can promote the heck out of. All right. So just while it's fresh in my mind, Kathy, I wanted to get that out. No, it's it's the key, guys. And we can move on. But, you know, again, when you when you get that and you're interviewing people and you're and you're listening to what their needs are, that's all it mm -hmm. is, is you're trying to yeah. find what their need is, taking the value prop and matching their need. Yeah. That's yeah. when they get that you're really looking at them as an individual. Yep. And then you take the testimonial and the success of your current agents. It's it's the only way I've ever done it. It's only it's yeah. it's huge. Now I know a lot of you are planning on coming to our lead up event. We get a lot of questions, and I would imagine yeah. you know they're going to be in the chat. Well, how can we get our hands on your recruiting scripts? For all of you that are joining us at lead up, we're going to be sharing every single recruiting script, the, the presentation, recruiting appointment number one, recruiting appointment number two. We're going to give you as much as we can in our time together today. But if you want our full recruiting script book, every single attendee is going to be receiving that. And when they get in, when they check in. So next source of, of recruits, Kathy, uh, social media video advertisements. Yeah, I was actually surprised to see that that one was number two, social media video advertisements. So what are you seeing work there? Yeah, so with a lot of the, again, the teams that I'm working with and Taylor in particular, the I have the honor of working and coaching with Taylor at, mm -hmm. who, uh, at Glover Agency. And so she's done a great job of taking, um, and so is our marketing team, right guys? Mm -hmm. So you've got to use, as Jeff said, you you either take a uh, someone in your company that is using your value proposition mm -hmm. and do a video of them, Right. And mm -hmm. we do the social media advertisement with that or mm -hmm. and or you take yourself as the team leader and and you start video. I know Erin Ward, one of my clients is doing that. She's starting to do that very well, where they're actually going to video why they should come. And then we put yep. it on social media and yeah. we actually are doing that um, with uh, social media video ads, which is huge. Yeah. And again, yeah. I was actually surprised, too. And then when I start talking about it, it makes complete sense. Do we yeah. have a chance to show them one? We are. When we get into the, not yet, it's coming up. Got it. Yeah. We're going to get into, right. when we get into recruiting tactics, Kathy, we're going to yeah. go back to that. Yeah. We're going to go it. back to that. Cause I think there's value in them seeing, well, what does oh. that look like? What do you mean by recruiting video yeah. ads? And, and, and I know that one was a strong number two, because when we asked Taylor, Hey, within the Glover agency, you know, what would you say are, are your top two sources of recruits? She said, well, you're not going to like one of them because <laughs> she knows how big we've been on. You know, you and I come from kind of the old school of prospecting. Yeah, and she immediately jumped to, she said, I get more leads from our social media video ads. She said, now I know I would recruit more if I picked up the phone more, which she's doing. It's true, um, yeah. but, but that was really cool to see. And we're not just talking newbies. I mean, we're, I, I was just at a sales meeting just literally an hour ago where I took a picture in between two 10, $11 million producers that just joined the team, right? Exactly. So this, this idea that, that, you know, you can't get producing agents to join a team that that's, that's in the past. All right. So that's number it's two. Also, you know, it's yep. still, it's very, excuse me, Jeff. It's, it's actually more, um, it's, it's it, you get more, uh, productive people coming your way because of the video ads. Yes. Yeah. They're because they are seeing the difference. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They're seeing the difference in your, in your own agents. The exactly. more you're spotlighting the success of your own agents, the more your own agents in your network or in your pod or in your team or in your brokerage, uh, they want that. So the, the number three thing is, Kathy, events and masterminds. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, top three sources of recruits? So we have phone prospecting, number one, uh, which for those of you that are coming to lead up, and I know a lot of you are, you're going to get all of our scripts for that. Uh, number two is social media video advertisements which I'm going to show you. We're going to show you some samples of those when we get in later in the plan. And yep. then number three is events slash masterminds. What does that mean? Yeah. So I love this so much. I love it so much. Um, so there's two things going on here. First is um, uh, a mastermind group. And actually this came out of 
me working with Taylor saying, hey, you got to do some sort of an event to invite agents from other companies to join you in education, right? Yeah. And she came up with the idea as we brainstorm and talk about what we do, what it looks like to actually call it a mastermind. Yeah. And so in this area, we call it the Detroit Top Producer Mastermind Group, where it started off inviting co-op agents, agents from other companies, or excuse me, agents we're doing transactions with. Yep. And I love that. The first event, I think we had over 100 people. But what's mm -hmm. so we do that four times a year and you actually get co-ops or other people and you invite them and yeah. you master mastermind best practices. Yeah. And, you know, we don't sell it as a recruiting event. It's, it's really, not. No, it's not at all. It's really, you know, it's masterminding. And in today's market, people are starving, everyone. They're mm -hmm. starving for your leadership. You think that they're getting good leadership and they're not. Yeah. So yeah. they're looking for <clears throat> outside help to get them in masterminding with other top producers or just people in their area. And I have to tell you, of all the things <clears throat> that I've working on in my coaching clients, the leaders or brokers and them, they're starting to implement it. And I'm getting, Jeff, I just talked to Erin just happened because I just talked to her recently. She has 50 signed up for hers. I know yeah. another client, Steve, he has, uh, um, he had over a hundred signed up for him. So they're starving yeah. for that. So yeah. the key to any of this is in the consistency of doing it. Yep. And so with the mastermind group, some people do it quarterly, like we do at Glover Agency. And I have some people that are doing it monthly. Mm. Right. And it's super. So it says, is that free or a cost? Yeah. No, actually it's free. It's free. Yep. It's totally free. Now you might want to do like a little happy hour or whatever afterwards, and you can have a lender there to sponsor it. But the, yeah. the thing is, is it's not come watch my webinar about our company. It's yeah. come spend two, three hours talking, discussing how we can all sell more homes. And what you're doing is, and this kind of stems from uh, a statement I made at lead up last year, Kathy, and that was everyone in this room. This was my statement last year at lead up. Everyone in this room needs to become known as the developer of people. That's right. what you want to be known for. Yes. If you become known as the developer of others. I'm known as the developer of people. Before even Glover, you existed. I was already out there doing training for the board. I was taking every single free opportunity I could get to train locally so I could build my reputation as the developer of others. Yeah. If you could focus in on that one thing, and by the way, that will help you fill these events. Maybe your first one is lower attended than the third one, and they grow as, as, as you continue to put them out there. But if you can build your reputation as the developer of others, you absolutely will naturally attract people who want to work for you. And the best part is, as long as you're providing them value, you don't have to recruit. There's no recruiting conversations that take place at these masterminds. It's we give value, and then here's what ends up happening. At the happy hour, and Kathy, you were there for, for the first one. Was, what, what ends up happening? Hey, I know you said, you know, you're not here to recruit anybody. And, and I know that you really don't want to do any recruiting. And I know that's not why you're doing this. Um, and while we're here, you know, it's kind of over. We're having a drink. Would you mind telling me what it would be like to work for your company? That is going to happen when they're impressed with what it is you put on or what it is you say. So focus on being the developer and others. And naturally, you'll attract people. Spend less time trying to talk to people about their company. I'm sorry, spend less time trying to talk to people about your company or your organization yes. and more time helping them actually win in their current organization. They'll come your way. It's a hundred percent accurate. You know, too many people want to pitch everyone, right? Mm -hmm. They get mm -hmm. on and they just talk and talk and talk at the human versus mm -hmm. looking at, you know, you and I come from a coaching background. We just want to help you. Yeah. And, you know, doesn't make a difference where they're at, what they're doing. If you become the person that develop others and they can feel that they're going to be attracted to. So I've seen a yeah. lot of my coaching clients that are also winning from that, Jeff, and getting, yeah. uh, bringing people on. So it is one of the best things we've ever done. And someone threw in the chat that they have space at their office to do no, it. Offsite. Yeah. yeah. Gotta be offsite. Exactly. Yeah. No, nope. you're, you're your office is your your office space is threatening. They don't want to be seen there. Uh, same thing. I see I see brokerages all the time. You know they hire us to do a sales rocket. All right, Jeff. Well, we want to do a sales rocket for our agents, but we also want to invite recruits. Okay, where are you thinking of having it? Well, we've got this really beautiful training room yeah. we just built out. Recruits aren't showing up. 
All right, you might get one or two and that's fine, but you're not going to attract the recruits you want to show up to your training room. It's got to be at a neutral location. So, Kathy, let's keep moving on. Um, uh, Ways to double down. So uh, in this part of the plan, ways you can double down on the above sources. So we already know the above sources are phone, social media, and events. How can we double down on some of those? You know, it's as simple as guys with the phone. You know, Jeff and I talk about this out doubling down on the phone in it's so simple you got to try people later in the day Mm -hmm. or on a saturday so you're calling in the morning let's say for an hour and a half or an hour right and when i was doing it jeff i did it three days a week honest to god and i recruited my first year i think 55 experienced agents 55 and all i did was three days a week from four to five thirty so to double down you're going to have to, you know, you call in the morning for an hour and then you're going to double the time you do it. And I found that I connected more with people between four and five thirty. So one way to double down is just doubling the hours you do it, but change the yeah. time and do it later in the day. We'll get to a top producer schedule in just a bit. Um, yep. Doubling down on events, you know, obviously perhaps you would expand your audience size. You know, so instead of targeting one to $4 million producers, maybe you'll target one to $10 million producers doubling down on online video advertisements. Well, you could get better at your copy, which we're going to show you what that copy should look like. I'm going to give you some samples of that in just a little bit. So let's keep moving, Kathy, for the sake of time. Uh, Let's jump to part four, five production goals, recruiting goals. Now, this isn't something we're going to solve in a webinar because this is all based on, you know, you have some broker owners who say, look, you know, I want to make a quarter million dollars a year off my team. We have some broker owners who say, I want to make a million dollars a year off my team. Depending on your income goal really depends on how many agents we have to have and 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 how many sales we have to have and so forth. But the one thing I want to point out here, and, and then I'll let you talk because I'm sure you have something to add as well. As a general rule of thumb, here's 21 years of doing this, 19 of them in leadership, starting with one of Kathy's offices. Here's what I know. Generally speaking, agents are going to do just enough to pay the bills and have a little bit left over. Even your top producers. Now, your top producers are a different story. Um, what I mean by that is, is they're going to do enough to, to accomplish their financial goals, but it's also not common for your top producer to, to wake up one day and say, you know what, I've been a $10 million producer the last five years. I'm ready to go to 20. That's just not common, all right? So as a good rule of thumb, Kathy and I follow this. You, even though your goal is to help everyone list and sell more real estate, for a business planning perspective, I want you to take this into consideration. And this is conservative thinking. So you're going to end up doing better by taking this thought process. Watch. When we're putting together our production goals and our recruiting goals, we're going to assume everyone is going to do the same. So now watch this. All of your agents said they wanted to increase their goals. Everyone said, yep, I want to go from 20 homes to 25. I want to go from 30 to 36. I want to go from 50 to 70. Everyone said they want to increase and we're encouraging them and we're helping them write business plans to do so. And my business plan, good, bad, right, or wrong, I'm assuming that they're all going to do exactly the same. Now, why would I do that? That's because some are going to do more, some are going to do less, and some are going to leave me. So if you factor all those things, if you factor those three things in, you're going to end up at about the same spot or you're going to just kind of ride the wave of the market. So what we like to do is say, okay, if, if, if our current population did uh, 950 transactions last year and we want to get to 1,050, we have to add 100 units. It's going to come through recruiting. And so from there, we can figure out how many agents, okay, are we going to, are we going to go after agents who are doing 10 deals a year because then we're going to need 10 of them. Are we going after agents who are doing 20 deals a year? Because then we're going to need five of them. We work backwards from there. Kathy, anything you want to add to that one? No, I, you know, the agents will most often, you guys all know this and probably everyone on the listening knows that, is that they're always going to think they're going to do more than, than they actually are. And we love the eagerness to your point. We love to support them in that. But no, you have to plan more conservatively. And also what you said is exactly right. You have yeah. to plan for the recruits and the addition of transactions to that your that your goal is set to. Yep. yep. All right. Let's keep moving along. There's a profit margin guide there. If you're wondering, Jeff, how did yeah, you come up that. with those numbers? Okay. This is my 20 plus years of experience. Kathy's 30 plus years of experience of brokerages and teams from as small as three to four agents to as big as over a thousand agents. 
All right. What this shows us is essentially the bigger the business gets, the lower the profit margin. However, if you do the math, in most of these cases, the net income is still increasing each year. All right. So if you're wondering, like, how much profit should I expect from a $1 million team? Well, if you're at a million dollars in GCI, you should be somewhere around 30%. If you're wondering, well, how much, what would my margin be if I got to 10 million in GCI? Well, 10 million in GCI, you're probably somewhere around 12 to 15%. So these are current. Now, this is not from a book that was written 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I know there's a lot of numbers that have run around for a long time. No disrespect to any of the authors of any of those books. This is based on today's math. This is based on today's costs. And Kathy, I don't have to tell you, the cost of running a business today, a little bit different mm -hmm. than it was five, 10 years ago, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, these are excellent best practices. You gotta have a guide for it. A lot of people don't know this. So yeah. you have to force yourself to take a look at it and figure out exactly what it is. And you have to plan towards it. Yeah. And by the way, if you're below, this gives you a target. This gives you a goal to, totally. go, a goal to go after. Uh, I just hear of so many broker owners and team leads out there that are operating from a playbook that was written 20 years ago. Uh, the cost of doing business was a little different 20 years ago than it is today. All right, let's keep moving forward. We're going to jump to uh, part six of the plan, which is on page 16. Um, these two are, are basically what's happening here is it's a real simple cheat sheet. In fact, you see at the bottom, it says duplicate this page as needed. It really depends on how many agents you have. Uh, very simple at a glance, you take the agent's business plan, you write their name, you write the units closed, their volume goal and their GCI goal. These are their goals for the year because at a glance, as part of my plan, I want to be able to look and see, ah, Amy wants to do this. Bob wants to do that. Uh, Anthony wants to do this. Chris, want, I want to know what my agent's goals are at, are at any given time. So that way, when I'm doing one-on-ones with them, I can just quickly go to this spot and say, okay, the goal was to close 36 units this year. We're halfway through. How you doing? Your agents want to know that you know their goals. Yep. I can't tell you how important it is that you enter a one-on-one -on -one with them knowing exactly what their goals are every single month. Kathy, anything you want to add to that? No, I, again, you and I grew up the same way. So no, it, again, I always go back to, and you know, this is one of my biggest thing is how do we make the agent that is working for us feel important, MMFI? And it is a simple, one of the simple things is to, is to know their individual goals and talk to them about that. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, I found that Taylor's excellent at it. And also the team leaders that I work with are excellent at it. And so you have to know what, what they're thinking and, you know, it is a number, but it's also, you know, what they want to do with the money that they're earning and why is it important to them? Yep. Yep, exactly. Okay, let's keep rolling. We're going to go to part seven, recruiting and retention. All right. <laughs> so um, I, I mentioned that I was going to share with you, all right, some of the recruiting tactics. And we have some of the videos, all right? So we have some of the videos, if Kelly wants to pull those up behind the scenes there. I want to share with you the social media videos that we're getting the best results with in the market. We're also, and write this down somewhere in your notes, every piece of your value proposition. So we've got a beautiful value proposition book. Uh, for those of you who are coming to lead up, we're actually going to teach everyone how to create their own value proposition book. It's one of our segments from the stage. So every one of you should have a value prop book. And this book should contain every, essentially every single reason why an agent should join you. But taking it one step further, and I want you to write this down, this is something I shared at Lead Up last year as well, your value proposition is only as good as it is at the rate at which you promote it. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. Your value proposition is only as good as it is at the rate at which you promote that. Why is that? Well, I could have the best value proposition in the world. If, if I'm not getting the message out there about it, no one's going to join me to come use it. So you can have a dialed in, fancy, beautiful brochure, but if I'm not getting the word out about it, it doesn't matter. So what we recommend you do, once you have your value proposition outlined, then from there, you can take it and turn it into email campaigns, video campaigns, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, and we'll share with you a couple of videos to give you an idea how you take a portion of your value proposition and share it with the public. So let's, let's take a look at a couple of these videos, Kelly. 
Are you a brand new real estate agent struggling to get started? Here at the Glover Agency, because of our training, support, and accountability, agents in their first full year with us, on average, take home $75,000 plus annually. If you're interested in taking advantage of the same training to kickstart your career, visit gloveragency.com forward slash careers. Awesome. All right. So there's one example. Obviously, we focused on the training and that one was one focused on part of new agents. Let's take a look at another one. Of a real estate organization where the associate next to you is only selling two homes a year or struggling to make it by? Not here at the Glover Agency. We're proud to say that we have the highest per person production in the state of Michigan with our agents selling on average over 30 homes a year. That's not to mention our associates selling 50, 60, 70, even 100 plus homes a year. Why? It's through our training, accountability, support, and culture that you can trust when you're in this environment, you're naturally going to become a top producer. If you're interested in learning more, visit gloveragency.com. Okay. Again, focusing career. on why. So, you so part of the video formula is you're always going to present a problem and then you're going to present how you're the solution to it. Mm -hmm. Let's see the next one real estate agent and would like to be a part of something bigger in your community we know that our agents want to give back to the communities that they serve and that's why here at the Glover agency we created a nonprofit organization Glover's Heroes Glover's Heroes gives back to different heroes like teachers nurses police officers firefighters veterans and more Every time one of those heroes buys or sells a home with us, we donate a portion of our commission back to them simply as a thank you for everything they do. In addition, we donate another portion back to Glover's Heroes, the nonprofit organization that throughout the year gives back to less fortunate heroes. Our agents want to make a difference in their community and Glover's Heroes gives them the outlet to do so. If you want to be a part of something bigger and be more active in your community, go to gloveragency.com forward slash careers. Okay. Again, another example, taking a portion of the value proposition, which trust me when I tell you, we have quite a few agents that come up to me at sales meetings and say, they say to me, Kathy, Jeff, you know, one of the biggest reasons why I joined this company is because of the good work you guys do in the community. Absolutely. Listen, you don't have to have your own nonprofit to, to, to do stuff like that. You can latch on to another nonprofit and do good work in the community, capture some footage and get the word out about it. Do we have anything more? Do we have any more? So we've got one or two more. Are you a real estate agent and sometimes you feel like your voice falls on deaf ears in your brokerage or your team? Not here at the Glover Agency. We have an agent leadership council, also known as the ALC, which is formed of our top 20% agents. They meet with our leadership team on a monthly basis and consistently bring us new ideas and suggestions for the team to allow us to continue to improve. You can rest assured that as a real estate agent on our team, your voice is always heard and your ALC is there to guide you every step of the way. If you're interested in learning more about our ALC, okay, let's go to the next one that we offer at the Glover Agency. Again, by the way, I hope you're writing down. Time. I hope you're writing down some of the stuff that we're sharing in these videos because this is this is our value proposition. Yeah. Go ahead. Exactly. Yourself from right, time to more. time realizing you forgot about your database this month. Oh, that's a good at one. At Glover Agency, we know one of the quickest ways to success is staying in front of your database on a consistent basis. For that reason, we put together a quarterly database plan that our agents can take advantage of at zero extra cost. This could be with client event ideas or a mailer that you send to them or a phone call you make or an email you send. And the best part is we do all the thinking and creation for you. You just let us know you'd like to take advantage. Overall, our agents are succeeding with their database at a high level at the Glover Agency and it's because we do everything we can to help you stay in front of them. If yep. you believe that you can grow your business through your database and you're missing the leverage to do so, reach out to gloveragency.com forward slash careers. All right, so there we go. So there's a handful of videos to give you an idea of what we're putting out there. Uh, Kelly, I also know that we took those videos and we turned them into email campaigns. So if we could show a quick sampling of, okay, now you take the value proposition, you create a video like that. Now, how do you turn that into an email campaign? So do we have some samples of those we can show? So culture, one focused on culture, award-winning culture. Yep, you can keep going. 
Okay, database plan, so actually showing them samples. What did I say? Agents, examples of agents using the stuff. You can't yeah. just tell me the stuff you have. You got to show examples of people using the stuff. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, the one thing I just want to throw out to the group is, remember, the number one thing that agents want, well, not, I mean, at least one of the top three, is how are you going to take things off my plate? Yeah. So, you, you know, again, we're spending a lot of time on this, but um, it's, you know, they want to see how you're going to take things off their plate to make their life easier. And the database plan is a perfect example of that. Yeah, I think right now, and I know, Kathy, um, at lead up uh, this April, we're going to cover the, the the all basically all of the age, what what all of the agents wants are today. All right. Totally. So we're going to create a list of mm -hmm. what real estate agents want today. And we're going to share that. And not important, more importantly than just sharing that, we're going to share with you the solutions you can create so you can see how you can be the solution in the market. But Kathy hit the nail on the head, which is one of them, which is what can you take off my plate? Another one right now is how can you help me build a brand? All right. Yep. So if your value proposition can help them build a brand. Uh, the next one is how can you help me go deeper with my database? How can I get more out of my database? I don't even have a database. So, um, you know, look at look at some of the challenges in the solution in, in the market today. It's not just, you know, the 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 old the old challenge was, well, I just need more leads. Not anymore. Agents are, are wising up to this idea that they can create business on their own. So if they're going to create business on their own, you might as well show them how to do that in your environment. All right. Let's keep scrolling through some of these. How to create a successful real estate client event. OK, I love that. Yep. We teach our agents how to put an event together, how to stay in front of your database, quarterly database plan. Obviously, we're heavy on the database today. Why yeah. are we heavy on the database today, Kathy? Because it's high profit. Yeah. <laughs> it's high profit. We're not spending as much on advertising anymore, which means the money that we were spending on advertising is now going to the bottom line. Well, you know, that's music to my ears. You know that. Yeah. And you know course. why. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's super important. It's where all the business comes from and it's, it, we're doing a great job yeah. of it. So for those of you that have revenue share or profit share models, you know, getting the message out about that. Uh, let's see, do we have any others? Just keep scrolling. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> okay, keep going. Is that the end, Kelly? Yeah. All right, cool. So anyway, so basically what I wanted to show in that in that sampling is, how do you take pieces of your value proposition and get the word out about them? And you can see in addition to the phone, uh, social media video, we're pairing that with an email campaign and uh, events and masterminds are an area where we're winning. What about retention, Kathy? Let's jump to retention. Um, you know, mm -hmm. in, your, in your 30 plus years of doing this, uh, my 20 plus years of doing this, when I think of retention, I don't know about you, but I think of this comes to mind. All right. Um, you should never be surprised when an agent is leaving your company. Totally, absolutely. And, and I know that probably sounds backwards compared to most of the industry uh, because most brokers are like, oh, I can't believe it. Are you kidding me? You should never be surprised. And, and how, how, you know, you might be thinking, well, Jeff, I'm surprised all the time. So what are you doing differently? Regular one-on-ones. This is something I learned from Kathy early on. Mm -hmm. Kathy, I remember from the first office you let me run, there was a clipboard on the front desk and it was always there every single day for agents to write their name in to meet with me one on one. Now, today in the Glover agency, it's just a standard. They meet mm -hmm. with our leadership team twice per month. So yep. there's no surprises. One on one, one on one meetings that are taking place. I mean, there's a million different things we can talk about as it relates to retention, but I can't think of anything more uh, effective than regular one on ones. Am I missing something, Kathy? You're not missing anything. It is 100% accurate. The key is, right, the more you're connecting one-on-one -on -one with people, yep. the more they know that you understand them, the more that you can find out what their problems are and where they yeah. need help. So yeah. I hear it all the time in my coaching for all these years is, well, I, I'm so surprised that this person left and I'm yeah. so surprised this happened. And, and the question I always ask is, when's the last time you met with them? And when did you have a one-on-one -on -one? and yep. what did you talk about? Did you ask them about them? And guys, yep. listen, the number one thing, and Jeff hears me say this all the time is MMFI, make me feel important. The yep. key is connection, connecting with them. And Kathy, I, one I, is, is the best. So I just wrote down and I just sent a group chat uh, between me, you and Taylor <laughs> yep, <laughs> for, cool. for lead up. Uh, we're going to share 
24 topics for one-on-ones because you should meet with them twice a month and we're going to give you a topic for every single one. First week of the year, third week of the year, fifth week of the year, Perfect. eighth week of the year. We're going to come up. We're going to get, we're going to sh- not come up with them because we use them. We're going to share with you our, our guide for one-on-ones for those of you guys that are coming to lead up. By the now, way, if you have no question. idea what I'm talking about, when I mentioned lead up, just write this down, check out gloveru.com forward slash lead up. That's G L O V E R the letter U.com forward slash lead up. That's our leadership only event. That's for, that's for brokers, owners, and, and team leads. All right, let's keep rolling, Kathy. I'm sorry. I cut you off. What were we going to say? No, no, it's, you know, it's okay. No, not at all. I mean, the key is connecting. So the question we get, we have people on here that have a hundred people, mm-hmm. right. That work for them. And yep. how many do we have at Glover agency right now? So I think there's about 36 full-time producers. Yeah. So Taylor meets two of them twice, twice a month. So how do you suggest it happens with a hundred agents? Well, you're going to have to divide and conquer. So what you're going to yep. do is you're going to break them into, you're going to break them into however many leaders you have. So if you have three leaders, you're going to break them into threes. Yep. All right. Uh, and perhaps your operations person meets with the bottom third. Uh, your sales coach meets with the middle third and you meet with the top third. Yeah. Uh, also in, in any brokerage, if you have a hundred agents, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, how many are really showing up anyway? So, uh, even if you have a roster of a hundred people, you're only going to get maybe 30 or 40 that are interested in eating, in meeting regularly anyway. So, um, but I would, I would divvy it up, uh, to your leadership team and don't be afraid to involve your operations team. A lot of times people think, well, why would my administrative assistant, you know, do one-on-ones with my salespeople? Your administrative assistant knows a whole heck of a lot more about real estate than the newbie who just joined your company. I can promise you they can learn a lot from your administrative assistant. Yeah. So I agree with that. And that has happened. The other thing that we used to do is, um, you know, cause we had so many people at Schweitzer, we had 750 agents who can't get to mm-hmm. all of them. And, and uh, 250 when I was in the Massachusetts area. And so what I would do is I, I would, I coach probably 30 people one-on-one, right? Yeah. But then we rotate it and I had a wait list and that type of thing. But then I would just write down for retention guys, every single week, every Monday morning, I'd have a list of our roster and I'd write down, you know, every, I would, I had a goal every week to talk to 10 and I just check off. I left a message you know, I ask them how they're doing. I, I talk to them. And again, yeah. it goes back to the number one reason why people leave companies is because their leadership isn't paying attention to them. Yeah. They're not, they're not connecting with them. They're not talking to them. And, and that's the number one reason why they leave besides the fact that things are broken and they aren't fixed. Right. By the way, and that, so- that makes, that makes sense. Why masterminds and events are an effective recruiting tool because totally. they're not getting that mastermind totally. setting with their current brokerage. Yep. yep. Okay, let's look at part eight and uh, company operation improvements, specifically as it relates to training and support. Kathy, you've seen a lot of different markets. Uh, You've seen good markets. You've seen bad markets. Um, We have in our business plan on page 22, training and in parentheses should be skills focused in 2024. Why did we add that? Uh, This is the number one thing. You know, it's music to my ears. Here's Mm -hmm. the biggest challenge that we have skill focus. The reality is, is that agents don't, are, okay, let me rephrase that. A lot of people are not very effective in how they communicate, right? So mm-hmm. we have sales-based training. How do I sell something? And we teach them the questions to ask the seller or the buyer or prospect yeah. on, you know, to find out the needs of the person that they're talking to. So skill focus is huge. So the training looks like we have training, uh, script practice three days a week, 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask. So what do you mean by, so so script practice, regular script yeah. practice? Again, it's, tw- people- it's 2024 and you think your agents, uh, you know, are too good for script practice. And I will tell you, it is the single greatest differentiator. Uh, we've been the number one home selling team in the state of Michigan, 10 out of the last 11 years. And I can tell you without a doubt, it is the single greatest differentiator between our agents and the rest because they're in here chanting, role-playing, writing scripts. Now we're teaching them how to write copy, which by the way, is a new skill. Forget about just phone prospecting and door knocking, but actually writing copy for social media. That is a skill that they need to learn. And that should be a focus of your training in 2024. Yeah, I love it so much. And again, yeah, the writing the copy is huge in Mm -hmm. stop the scroll that the marketing team put together is unbelievable. So you have to spend time on the skills, right? They're, you know, professionals aren't going to get better 
in this world, whether it's sports or a doctor, unless they yeah. have skills that they're working on. And, and you can and leverage. Our, yep. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, finish. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and the team owners and broker owners on here, you can leverage us for a lot of this. I mean, we have a lot of broker owners that are joining us, whether they're on here or not, um, that, that utilize our sales rocket tool, uh, which is their, they use that as their onboarding system because it's a complete end to end sales training onboarding system. Uh, they're always signing their agents up for our webinars or, you know, even down in Phoenix. I mean, we had a good amount of brokerages that had 10, 12, 15 agents there in attendance. Leverage us as much or as little as you want for this piece because obviously this is the area that, you know, we're spending a lot of our time on. Yeah, and it's it's sales based training. It gives you the process and systems, and you know how passionate I'm about I am about it. Um, yeah. And because it's the best training, and again, I'm not trying to sell anything, but I'm just saying the people, the agents out there are starving for someone yeah. to give them guidance of you know what skills do I need to learn, what yeah. systems do I need to follow, and how how can I get my schedule improved? And, so, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off, Kathy. <laughs> Hi, man. It's okay. No, I was just going to say during, because I know people would want to know, and so we decided we're going to do this at lead up. Uh, we're going to give you a list of the top areas that agents need the skills training on. And then for each, for each area. So like, let's just say it's pricing property. We're going to give you three to five suggestions of what to train them on for pricing property. And so we're going to do the heavy lifting for you and put, we we're working on a list of all the areas that we believe your agent should be trained the most on right now. And then we're going to give you the resources for each one of those to be able to implement that in your team or brokerage. And talk about a good topic, pricing mm -hmm. property. That's uh -huh. something that working with everyone on right now. Yeah. Support would be operational support, things that you're going to add. Remember agents today, uh, you know, the day of them just wanting leads, those days are numbered or gone. Uh, don't get me wrong. They want leads. They want appointments. That's never going to go away completely. So I shouldn't say gone, uh, but they also want a lot more than that today. And one of those areas is support. So what are things that you could implement to support them? I mean, little things like, uh, could you add a 24 seven answering service to your, to your main line to where somebody answers the phone 24 seven and then emails the leads off. Um, could you implement an on-call system where after 5 PM, you know, until 8 PM, someone behind the scenes is paid, you know, hundred bucks a week extra or whatever to be on call to write offers for them. What are things you can think of, uh, when you, when you think of a real estate transaction that you can take off their plate, that's where you would write those in on page 22 under support. All right, let's keep rolling. I'm just being mindful of our time here. I let's just want to throw out, let me just throw yep. one other idea about support guys is, you know, mm -hmm. I think of our, our staff, right? Mm -hmm. And so having great staff that lives your core values, right? That are positive, they're supportive, they're helpful is super important to your retention with your agents. Yeah. And so it's working hand in hand with the staff is equally as important as working with the agents, again, and helping them become better leaders to become more supportive of the agents and have a, a very culture um, full of positivity, but also helpful and helping the agents become productive. So that's a huge piece of support at Glover Agency as well. Yep. All right, let's move forward to page 26, top producing leadership schedule. Now, people look at this schedule and, and you might get tired just looking at it. All right. It, it's exhausting. And by the way, Kathy, you know, this, mm -hmm. this is my schedule. This is the exact schedule. The schedule on the right is the exact schedule that I followed while I was building Glover agency, because of course I was maintaining a sales business of over hundred transactions a year. For those that don't know, you know, I, from 2008 till 2019, I never dropped below hundred. So the schedule on the right will maintain a sales production, but also will help you build your company and build your organization. The schedule on the left would be for a business owner who, who is not in production. And you know, the schedule on the left is for someone who wants to run a very successful team, uh, successful network, downline, organization, company, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I know when you look at this schedule, um, it, it looks like a lot, but it really is. I mean, you're the example. You want your agents to listen, sell more real estate, show them what work ethic is. That's the schedule, Kathy, anything you want to add or anything that stands out to you on this schedule? Yeah, it's interesting. So for everyone on here and people that I'm fortunate to coach and the team leaders and brokers that I coach, they know I'm 
all over a schedule. But what's interesting is one of the challenges, the most common challenge or one of the most ca common challenges still is Jeff is the, is the agent saying, got a minute. Hey, you got mm. a minute. Yeah. Oh, Kathy, did we lose you? Did we lose me or did we lose Kathy? Give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me. We lost Kathy. Okay. Kathy will be back. So I'm going to carry the, there we go. Let's just blame AT&T. AT&T today is who to blame. There we go. All right, Kathy, you'll come back. We're going to keep rolling through. Uh, so let's jump, by the way, the next page I have in there. Okay, fine. You don't want to follow the schedule on page 26. At least take some items from the schedule and implement them on the page below. This is your opportunity to write out your new schedule. Of course, um, you know, the schedule above is a model to follow. You know, I, I would I would say the, the schedule above on page 26 is for anyone that's looking to run a team or brokerage that wants over half a million or more in profit. Um, that, that's, that's the schedule to follow uh, on page 26. Take it and do what you want with it. Um, obviously we have a lot of success stories following it, including I was the one who created it. So, um, don't get, don't shoot the messenger on, on that one. All right. So, all right, let's go to part, uh, page 20, 28, part 10, because everyone's running different businesses. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. This is just a standard, you know, profit and loss statement. So we can skip past that. All of you guys have one of those, the expense management activity. Uh, you guys know what this is because we do this with your real estate agents. My recommendation for my business owners is that you do this minimum quarterly. By the way, I'm on page 30, Kelly. Uh, you do this minimum quarterly, the expense management activity. Some of you are going to do this monthly. At, at a minimum, I want you to do this quarterly. Again, we do this with the agents, so you guys are probably familiar with that. Let's keep rolling. Part, part 11, 12, and 13. Okay you saw a portion of what social media plan looks like, a video plan looks like, skill development plan, all right? We just had a meeting with our salespeople, like I mentioned an hour or so ago before I got here, and you know we're reinventing the way real estate agents do social media. I shared that in our sales meeting, and how we're doing it is we're no longer using Canva, we're no longer using just stock images, we're going heavy, all in on video, all in on, on raw photos. Again, you guys have been coming to our events, so you've been hearing me say this for years. But from a leadership standpoint, all right, from a leadership standpoint, the people that, that are in your market are looking up to you. They are following you. You are a leader, whether you're leading a team, whether you're leading a brokerage. And so does your, I want you to write this question down. Does my social media portray, does my social media portray that I'm the best in my market at what I do? Does my social media portray that I'm the best in the market at what I do? Now that could be listing and selling homes. By the way, for me, that was my, that's what I put out there. And because of that, I attracted other people that wanted to list and sell homes. Now I would, for those of you that are in production, absolutely spotlight that as much as possible, but also spotlight the difference that you're making in your agent's careers and in their lives. Whether it's video of you teaching a training class, whether you're hosting an open house, or maybe you're walking your agents through a home inspection and pointing things out to them, capture as much footage as possible of everything you're doing in the industry and be known as the one in the trenches. So many of our competitors are standing behind a pedestal or stand, sitting, you know, sitting behind their, their office desk, you know, just preaching what they used to do. Get me footage of what you're doing. Agents want to be in business with productive, proactive agents. So if you want to attract more agents, show everything you're doing in the field. It's a little secret. All right, let's keep rolling. Hiring needs next and ultimate. Part 14, so all of us have hiring needs. Well, why does it say next and ultimate? Well, I have ultimate in there because I've got a great story. And, um, you know, I don't even know if Kathy knows this. Uh, and I don't know whether she's joining us again or not. Uh, she might be in the waiting room. Kelly, I'm sure you're checking for it. Anyways, um, what is next and ultimate? Okay, Kathy probably doesn't know this. I don't know if I shared this from the stage or not. Anyways, I was in a mastermind group one time where someone challenged me, and I did this with all of our attendees at last year's lead up. 
Someone challenged me to write down the name of a person who would make a massive difference in your business, but you think you could never get them. Write down the name of someone in your market or outside your market who you think could make a massive difference in your business, but you think you could never get them. By the way, I did this like eight, nine years ago. I wrote down Kathy Schweitzer's name. True story. I knew that she was going to be expensive. I knew that it was going to take a lot of lead follow-up and I knew that it was going to be worth it. Write down the name. And by the way, through the years, because I wrote down that name, I kept in touch with her. And that's what led us to me being her first choice when she decided to make a a change in careers and move back to Michigan. So next and ultimate hiring needs, write down somebody you think you can never get and stare at that. Watch what happens in your life. 15, value proposition changes. All of us should be looking at what we did to add value to our agent's life last year. How do I determine what to change? Well, what did you implement that they didn't use? And based on the industry, what do you need to add? Now, the good news is for those of you that are joining us at Lead Up, we're going to spend an entire 90-minute segment on the latest and greatest value propositions of today because they always change. Somebody will say, well, wait a minute, Jeff, didn't you do that last year? Yes. The value proposition of last year is old, all right? You should always be looking at staying ahead of your competition as it relates to value proposition. And then part 16 would be coach suggestions, which it would be if Kathy was coaching you or somebody else reviewing this business plan with you, they would, they would add the coach suggestions in there. But what I want you to do, do me a favor. Oh, I love on page 36 and 37. If you want to keep scrolling there, Kelly, 36, 37 on page 36, 37, our marketing team put together a social media guide for leaders. All right. So there's stuff that you can do there. If you're wondering, well, Jeff, what do I post? What do I put out there? All right, there's a two-page spread for you. That's a social media guide for leaders right there. And then finally, on the last couple pages in the workbook, I want to share something that I've already mentioned a few times now. We'll stop it on that one right there. And that's our lead-up event coming this April. Now, a lot of events today, especially if you follow Glover U. Jeff, it seems like every time I turn around, you guys are hosting an event. There's no doubt. Why do we do that? Okay, you guys understand Every time we host an event, and Kathy knows this as a CEO, she drives her nuts. Every time we host an event, Kathy, does Glover U make money or lose money? Uh, let's see. Every time we host an event, um, I hate to tell you, but we don't make money. We break We even. don't make money. Exactly. Yeah. Kathy's like, where does he want me to go with this? We don't make money. Yeah. That's correct. So people say, why are you always hosting events, Jeff? Because our mission at Glover U is to impact millions to live their most unreal life. And so... This event is completely different. This isn't any sort of sales talk or whatever. This is different than all the other events we do. Why? Because there's a screening process to get in. In fact, we turn away. The first year we had this event, Kathy, we turned away more people than actual tickets sold. So we had more people that wanted to be in this event that filled out the application to be in the event that got turned away. Now today, because people know that there's an application process, we generally speaking only have leaders applying to join us. We're still turning about one out of every three away. Why? Because I know the value of being in a room of high achievers. So I want to do for you the same thing that those that have gone before me have done for me. And I want to put you in a room of high producing brokers, owners, leaders of teams, recruiters, sales trainers, directors of operations, directors of marketing. And so if you're not familiar, April 11th through the 13th, this is our leadership only event. We only do this event once a year. All right. Some people say, well, wait a minute. Didn't you do something similar to this in Scottsdale in the fall? All right. That was for lead listing agents. That was different. That was, of course, for leaders but it was for listing agent leaders. This is for team owners. This is for brokers. This is for operations directors. This is for marketing directors. This is for anyone in leadership in the industry because we have very high level conversations around recruiting, retention, profit, growth, and it's the only time of year that we do it. Now, here's the other thing. This particular event We know because it's high level, high achievers that are at this event, we got to put it at a great spot. So we chose the Diplomat Resort, which is in Hollywood, Florida, which is a beautiful property uh, right between Fort Lauderdale and Miami. So you can choose to fly into either airport. And we're going to be spending, if you want to scroll down to the schedule, Kelly, thank you. We're going to be spending, as you see there, two and a half days, masterminding, one-on-one interviews, breakout sessions, Everything designed to help you build your network. I know we've got a lot of people on here that are with revenue sharing companies where their job is to build their network. 
Once you have your network built, how do you keep people in the network? And most importantly, how do you get them to be productive? Okay, we talk a lot about per person productivity and I know a lot of people from revenue and profit sharing companies come to our events because we're known for teaching you how to teach your people how to go out and produce. Mm -hmm. So Kathy, I know through the years you've had an opportunity to go to a lot of events. You know, you've seen sales conferences, you know, obviously you guys are familiar with our retreat and our summit. Those are for your salespeople. Bring your salespeople to those. We'll kick their butts for you. All right. I can say the same things that you say, but because I said it, I'm, I'm a genius and somehow they listen to me. I know how that works. It works in my <laughs> world too. I got to bring in other guest speakers to talk to my people because it's like, oh, that's just Jeff being Jeff again. But this one is particularly for, for leaders of teams and leaders of brokerages. And that's, that's, that's unique because there's not a lot out there for team owners, especially. So Kathy, you've seen a lot of events. What's your impression of this event? Yeah. So what I like about the event is that it is, First of all, it's very hands-on, right? And it's all leadership. And not only what we give you from you know, the stage, for example, and we're going to give you a lot of content to bring back, is it's the people around you. It's connecting and masterminding with other top brokers, other top leaders in the area. And that is just as important. The other thing that I always get feedback on, and again, being at a lot of events in my past, is the thing that I love about what we do is we actually give them great content to bring back to their agents. Like we share yeah. everything yeah. about what we do, what's working. And that's really what um, a good mastermind group does. And that's actually what we do a great job with at lead up. It's, 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 it's probably by far an experience that I've done a lot of broker and team leaders meetings attended in my life. But yeah. again, it's, you're going to walk away with um, so much, Meet, I guess is what I say. And again, yeah. it's not just from us, it's from others. Yeah. And I, and uh, you hit the nail on the head with bringing stuff back to your salespeople to teach them skills. Mm -hmm. But we're so big on skills with salespeople that we believe our leaders should also have skills. So we actually teach, you know, yeah. you're going to see uh, the recruiting appointment, how to close, mm -hmm. how do you convince a recruit to join you versus a competitor? Yeah. We actually go through and role play that live from the stage, right? We actually have eight, we actually have leaders in the audience, write out a script. Something that we did at the summit is we, we taught the agents how to write copy. We had everyone stand up and learn how to write copy. Guess what? We're going to do the same thing for leaders, but the yeah. difference is your copy is going to be how to attract agents. Their copy is how to attract more buyers and sellers. So it's a very, skills-based training, mm -hmm. but specific skills for leaders, the recruiting skills, the development skills, the training skills, the, the retention skills, skills that they don't teach us, you know, when we get our broker's license or when we decide to become a leader. So uh, if yeah, you get that's the chance- one of the greatest, yeah, sorry, that's one of the greatest needs by yeah, far is. Is, is how do I close to get their recruit? What type of copy should I write? How should I do it as a leader? So yep. that's a huge part of what we do. I can't wait for that. I love that. Yep. So go to GloverU.com forward slash lead up. By the way, the cost of the ticket's only $5.95. All right. Last year and the year before that, it's been like $6.50, $700. We figured out a way to bring the cost down on that. Uh, sorry, Kathy. That means we're probably losing even more <laughs> money, but that's okay. People are like, why would you why would you do it if you lose money? Our mission is to impact millions, and we know life's full circle. It's going to come back to us 10 times fold sometime before we die, hopefully. Right, Kathy? <laughs> it will. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> it will. So go to GloveView.com forward slash lead up. By the way, we have a discounted room rate at the Diplomat. That hotel, um, that's a normally five fifty dollars a night hotel for this time of year. I mean, it's April, right? It's like their peak season. I it negotiated is. a three twenty nine dollars a night rate. All right, so you can stay at the beautiful Diplomat. I've stayed there before. It's a great property, a great resort. There's no need to leave the resort. Everything's there on site. You can come in a day or two early, stay a day or two afterwards, enjoy the weekend in South Florida this April, and uh, we hope you'll join us again. That's April 11th through the 13th. Uh, go to GloverU.com forward slash lead up, or you can scan the QR code in your workbook. And I can't think of a better time to be down there right before the busy crazy busy season getting our teams and brokerages ready to go to the next level and getting us prepared for this new market kathy anything you want to add nope look forward to seeing you everyone there thank you for your time everyone today uh, awesome. it's been a joy
Awesome. Well, go get this plan printed out. Let's start working on it. Listen, it's 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 February 22nd, so we better get after this. If we don't have our plan written, now is the time. We're here to help you guys take advantage of as many or as little of our resources as you want. And I promise you, if you attend Lead Up, we will not let you down. I promise you that. All right. Have a successful day. We'll see you guys later.